Hello everyone! In this video, we will be talking about the CMMT-AS and CMMT-ST, which are part of the CMMT Drives series at Festo. We're going to be using a library on the Rockwell PLC Logics platform to execute point-to-point -point movement for these drives. This is our layout. I chose to connect to port X18 for drive parameterization and to the top port for real-time field bus control, which is port X19 for the CMMT-AS and port XF1 on the CMMT-ST drive. In this case, we'll be using version 36 of Compact Logics PLC. Ethernet IP is the communication preference, and the control method is Profidrive over Ethernet IP. Now let's go to the website, typing in www.festo.com. Then we simply go to the country and pick where you are. In the search area, type in CMMTAS, and then we scroll until we find the servo drive that we're looking for. We click on the one we want to select, and immediately we are presented with the drive and the downloads area. Once we get to the downloads and the software section, we're going to download, first of all, the library for Rockwell. We're going to scroll until we find function blocks for Rockwell. Then we expand this by clicking the down arrow, and the latest function block is version 2.8, and I'm going to click on Download. Additionally, we are going to need some Festo software, which is going to be the Festo Automation Suite. The latest is 2.9. We start the download, then we install the Festo Automation Suite first. After the installation is complete, then we launch the Festo Automation Suite, followed by the plug-in for the drive installation next. And here is the installation complete. After we've installed the plug-in for the CMMTAS, we're going back to the first page and select New Project. If you have the devices connected online, you can scan for the devices. I'm turning the devices off right now so it doesn't scan when you first select this field with this tab, and then if you want a successive scan, you do a refresh. This drive here is the device that I'm using, and when we take a closer look at this device on the right-hand side, we see the device details, in this case, I have an older version firmware, and it's important to always go to the web and download the latest firmware. In this case, I'm going to do a firmware update, because this is what I recommend for any new commissioning startup. The controller now is cycling power. Then we go and click on Device Details, and now we can see that we have the new firmware 35.9 instead of 34. Let's go back and click on Actions, and we go to Network Settings. Here, that we can modify the IP address. Automation Suite is able to find the device through DHCP on first startup, so you would turn off the DHCP enable, and you would assign an IP address to the device along with the gateway. And what this does is, it sets the front X18 port IP address, not the top port, the top port is going to be set inside of the project. At this point, the controller is ready for a program. First, I'm plugging in the Ethernet cable into the top port for the PLC control. Next, I click Refresh to rescan the device. This discovers the second port on the drive, and then I'm going to click on Add to Project. Now, let's go back to the home page. The controller also has a web page. We open the web page. From here, we can also do a download firmware package. We can also set up the network settings on the web server, and we have a diagnosis area. Let's go back to the home page. Now that we have this, we can rename the device. We can call it whatever we like. Then we double click on the device to open up the first time commissioning. Here, you can start our first setup. We select the drive, and we start to add the devices from our project building material. In my case, I'll add my motor. I have an EMMTSA motor. I enter here the part number found here on the devices, 5242197, and then click Apply. Next, I'm going to add an axis, so I'm going to choose this part number, 8192344. I click Apply. Then we're going to add a mounting kit between the axis and the motor. That part number is 8197468. Click Apply, and thus we've got the hardware selection complete. Now, let's work on the device settings. In my case, I'm only using 120 volts, so I'm going to modify this. For intermediate circuit voltage, I select 99 volts. I'm not using any external brake resistor. 
and I'm going to keep I.O. and field bus for the activation of the enable signal. Next comes the application data entry. I don't expect to have a load or anything connected to my actuator. Here you enter the weight of the load you're moving with the linear actuator. In my case, since I have no load, I leave the field at the default value of zero. I'm going to keep the axis horizontal, but if I wanted to, I could flip it vertical. You could change the rotation polarity by clicking here or here. The next entry we need to change is very important. It is the field bus configuration. The available protocols are Profinet and EtherCAT, but in this case we're using Ethernet IP. We click on Ethernet IP, and here we can go and change the IP address of the Ethernet control port on the top of the drive, X19 for CMMT AS drives, or XF1 for the CMMT ST drives. Next, we move on and configure the profiles, and we start with the factor group. In the factor group, we have two parameters that we need to configure, the position and velocity resolutions. We have six decimal places for position and three for velocity. We leave the defaults unchanged. And then we have the telegram selection. For point-to-point -point positioning library, we use the telegram 1 to 11. Then we move on to the axis configuration under the axis 1 section. Here we can see, based on the part number, we're using the actual working stroke of the linear actuator. We begin with homing. For the homing method, I'm going to go to the drop-down menu and scroll through the abundant referencing methods, and I select this one. At this point, we're done configuring the axis, but we still see some orange squares that represent parameters that have wrong values, and we need to correct them. Most errors are corrected by clicking this button, but some have to be adjusted manually, if we click on the small orange square next to the parameter value, we see the recommended values that we need to enter to correct the error. So let's correct these values by starting with correct all parameters, and then we correct each one individually. For the homing, I selected the homing to a switch, but since I chose no switches, then I need either to add a homing switch or change the homing method. I choose a different homing method instead. Then we move on and correct the other remaining errors. At this point, we want to commission the controller by itself. Just using the Festo Automation Suite software, I'm going to write to the device because I don't want anything that's in the device to be left. And now we're online and want to store the project on the device and reinitialize the device because this is a newly downloaded project. You might have a few errors. I'm going to accept all so that we have a green LED on the FAS project in order for any movement to happen by the automation suite. Next step is to take control using the plugin. This is taking the control sovereignty away from anything outside this FAS software. Then I want to enable the power stage, after which we go to the diagnosis to check for any errors, and then we go to I.O. state. I have wired the STO A and B so that there's no e-stop. Control enabled hardware signal is on. Otherwise, I would not be able to enable this drive. Let's start with a homing sequence. Now let's run a jog sequence. Let's run an incremental move sequence next. And finally, an absolute move sequence. Now let's go to the software application portion. Let's start Rockwell Studio 5000 and start a new project using the processor 11769L36ERM part number. But in your case, it can be any Logix processor. I'm using software version 36. Next, I'm importing the AOI for the CMMT drive from the folders I have previously downloaded from the Festo website. In our case, we are using the Extended Process Data AOI, which is an optional telegram to exchange additional parameters from CMMT drive. The Extended Process Data can read and write up to 8 parameters or 32 bytes from the CMMT drive. The Extended Process Data Telegram is named as Telegram 910, and data values can be accessed through the instances 
110 and 111. Next, I'm going to register the EDS file for the CMMT. After the import, I'm adding the CMMT drive to the I.O. tree Configure the correct IP address. I'm changing the format from SINT to INT, and then I select Extended Process Data, Exclusive Owner option from List. Select SINT Data Type. Click OK button of Module Definition. Click OK button of EDS Configuration Window. And then download the program to the PLC to test the I.O. communications. Here we can see the I.O. OK light solid green, which means the communications are working properly. Now, let's begin adding the code to our project. We begin by adding the AOI instruction. Next, we configure the AOI function block. We create a control tag first. Then we map the input and output control tags. Click on the EPD input field. Select the name of the tag from the pull-down window, then click on the EPD output field. Select the name of the tag from the pull-down window. Now let's go back to the Festo Automation Suite and set up the data we need for the exchange between the CMMT drive and the PLC using the new AOI. We go to the Profiles tab, click on Profit Drive, and then click again on the Extended Process Data tab. Here we can pre-select eight parameters that we can read and write between the two devices. We can start with the sent data from the drive to the PLC. I will add just five parameters to read. I have already added four and will add one more. And now let's add a process channel to the received data. Let's go back to the PLC program and configure the new AOI. First, I'd like to go to the folders that I had previously downloaded and open up an example program using the extended parameter data AOI and copy the rung comment that will help us setting up the parameters we'll be reading and writing. Now, Let's configure the function block parameters for the data exchange we want to execute between the PLC and CMMT drive. First, we add the read data parameter data to the rung description to make this process easier. Then we evaluate the data size. As we can see, our parameters have a size of two bytes. It's UINT, and from the information above, we see that for this data type, we must use number four. The other parameters are of type real, and like before we see that for real data type, we must use a value of 9. And since we have four parameters of real data type, we enter a value of 9 for each one of them, so it's a total of four nines. As soon as we update the data value in the EPD configuration input register with all IDs data structure format, we can see that the AOI begins reading fresh values in the EPD objects 0 through 4 for the five registers we mapped inside the FAS software. And now let's add a parameter that we want to change from the PLC code, the CMMT drive. For that, we go back to the Festo Automation Suite and add to the received data the referencing method parameter, and then we go back to the PLC AOI function block and enter the corresponding value for the parameter based on the data type. In our case is 5, which represents double integer data type. Next, we need to test the receive data extended parameter function. We know that the parameter we are changing is the referencing method. So as we change that parameter value in the AOI function block, 
We will look at the drive using the FAS software to see if the value has changed. Next objective for our video is demonstrating the fixed stop moves using the point-to-point -point AOI function block assisted by the extended parameter data, AOI function block. To demonstrate this, we need to add one more parameter to the received data extended parameters list, and we would use the clamping torque parameter, which we will use to adjust the clamping torque function used in the fixed stop moves. After adding the clamping torque to the extended data parameters received data list, we're going back to the EPD, AOI function block, and enable the additional parameter to write to the drive, we see that the parameter is a real data type format, and for that we add a value of 9 in to the EPD configuration output entry field inside the AOI, and then we enter a value in the EPD output object 1 that would represent the new clamping torque value. Next, let's execute some fixed stop moves using the point to point AOI function block. First, we lower the clamping torque limit, which will cause the motor to stall at a lower current limit, while ignoring the following error fault, which is disabled during the fixed stop move. First, let's set up the point-to-point -point AOI function block to a mode position 2, which is an absolute position control mode, and then we set a maximum travel position of 180 mm and a velocity of 0.05 m per second. We write a value of 1 into the travel to fixed stop field of the AOI, and then we write a value of 1 into the execute mode field of the AOI. As a result, we should achieve a motion that is slowed down by the rubber band tied to the actuator without causing a following error drive fault. When the clamping torque value was reached, the axis acknowledge set point and clamped torque reached flags are turned on by the AOI as the axis is continuing its travel to the final absolute travel position of 180 millimeters. If we repeat the same move without enabling the fixed stop move, the axis will fault out with position following error. This concludes our video presentation of the CMMTAS, Rockwell AOI point-to-point, -point, and extended parameters data, demonstrating the fixed stop moves. We hope you found this video useful. For additional technical documentation and instructions, please check out the video description below.